And and I don't think that, you know, the federal government or the just, let's say, law enforcement or the legal system, they're not going to get any more fair understanding and decent in their practices or their approach anytime soon either. Not in reality. No. So you have quite, uh, quite the lucrative business to look forward to, which brings me to my next question. How do you know what to charge? How do you know what to charge someone when they walk in the door? Well, you remember I told you about the lawyer Bobby Lee Cook? Yes, I did. Yeah, I remember My mentor. That. Yes. Uh, Bobby Lee taught me how to charge fees. Okay. Um, and how do you do it? You just got to have the balls to look somebody in the eye and say it's going to cost you X. And if they can't pay X, then you say, you know, I guess I'm just not the right person for you. Mm. And you have to be able to judge your worth um, under the circumstances. When I was younger, I used to try to tell there were certain tricks that you could say. You could say, well, you know, I don't know how much bond to set in your case. You got to tell me how much bond can you afford? And if they tell me they could afford a bond of $150,000, right. I'd know that the money was available. Right. Um, or they'd come in, I hate to say it in this way, but certain people would come in with a great deal of jewelry on. Okay. And you look at the jewelry and you say, you know, Unless that's fake. <laughs> you can stand it. Right. But I, I don't need to really do that anymore. Fortunately, I, I can charge the kind of money that uh, I, I, I want to because I've, I've been lucky enough to be successful. Man, that's amazing. Uh, I, I want to say again, thank you for what you and the team were able to do on my behalf um, because that shit could have I still wonder if we could have beat that case. Yeah, but you had the second one sitting in the wings. That's the one that I was always told you I couldn't beat. Yeah, see, and that, what he's talking about is, okay, so I had guns in the car, machine guns and silencers in the car. I had uh, a couple more handguns also in the car uh, for protection, of course. Uh, and those, all of those, we feel we could have beat. Yeah, because there were never any conversations about silencers. Right. There was nothing, anything about you talking about machine guns. Right. And nothing to do with that. Right. So that was that was defensible. Right. Okay. But when they went to my house and went in my closet and saw I had a vault full of more guns. And that, that presented a bit of a problem. <laughs> but not even just that. The method in which you gained entry into this vault in my closet in the master bedroom of my house was biometric fingerprint scan, which I thought was very cool 007 type shit to do at the time. And that's the only motherfucking thing that kept me from beating the entire case. Yep, I couldn't explain away the biometric entrance. <laughs> and when, when I say biometric, so I have to put my thumb on the, my, my thumbprint was programmed to unlock the door of the vault to let me in and distribute the firearms to my security guards who were outside, who were the only ones to touch the gun. Um, <laughs> but it kept a record of, how many times it was open, what fingerprint opened it. My fingerprint was the only fingerprint only there fingerprint. to open it. The only one program. Had I just had a regular keypad entry, nobody could have ever proven anything otherwise. But they would have never gotten a warrant to search my house if not for the inappropriate nature they did to approach my car. So if we beat the car, don't we essentially... Uh, absolve all of the evidence that was found in the house? Nope, because they had probable cause to get the warrant, even if you wind up beating the case that gave them the probable cause to get the warrant. Mm. That's that's one of the more difficult things to ever explain to a client. They say, you know, if 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 we beat the case, right, right, yeah. then they can't use this stuff that they got to begin with, or they can't use it in another case. Right, and I have to explain that no. Each step is different. Mm. Even though you may be found not guilty, that doesn't change the fact that it was lawful to do what they did at the time. Yeah, and that is the conversation that we had hours on end in my basement at my house while I'm on house Yeah, I arrest. tend to remember somebody that just wouldn't accept that proposition. I could not, I could <laughs> not do it. I said, man, we can beat these people. And he's like, man, I can beat some of it, <laughs> but if they bring all these guns in and line them up on the table and tell a jury that these were in his house that only he had access to, 
you don't believe he possessed any of them, and each of these guns would have carried how much time? Well, I mean, you being a convicted felon, it was 10 years for each gun. So that's all of those guns that was lined up on the table, 10 years apiece, or we could take a year and a day. I just couldn't turn down the year and a day after that. You yeah, know we that? just didn't expect you'd go to, where the hell did you serve your time, Arkansas? Arkansas, man, Forest City, Arkansas. When the judge said. The judge and and the prosecutors, everybody said. said we would like for him to serve his time in the Atlanta camp. Not that they would treat an highly successful black entertainer differently <laughs> in where they would put him to serve his sentence. But they made it as difficult as yeah. they could. Yeah. yeah. And you remember, they even gave you the problem coming home. They did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, man, you know, the ego is a, is, a, is a very tricky monster. It's a fickle mistress. You know what I mean? The ego in that, you know, just a person who feels like, I'm going to exercise my authority in whatever way I can in this situation just because I can. And that happens a lot of times. And, you know, I happen to have been a victim of it, but it did not defeat me. It put me in a position where I was able to learn lessons, build and grow my character, my personality and use the experience, you know, to help others. And that's the key. Yeah. Helping others. Yeah. 